I'm Nat Barker, and this is a podcast for fintech professionals, where we learn from talented people working across the sector. My guest today is William Barraclough, Creative Director of Tide. William, I was finding your name a bit of a mouthful there, actually. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Where are you speaking from today? I'm very well. I'm speaking from the studio at the end of my garden in sunny Surbiton. Okay, nice. Leafy Southwest London. Indeed. Now, William, the first thing I wanted to ask, I noticed in the notes that you sent over ahead of our conversation today, you mentioned one fiancé, two boys, brackets, six forward slash ten. Now, I just wondered, first of all, six out of ten, you know, not bad, but I think for one's family, ideally, you're looking at the sevens and eights at least. So what is it that your partner and two sons could be doing a little bit better to boost those averages? Well, I think they need to define their metrics, work on their OKRs, you know, all those usual good things. So. <laughs> about how yeah, we measure no, success. Indeed, indeed. So, yeah, no, my youngest is six, uh, my oldest is 10, which uh, means I've been doing this for like 11 years of parenting, um, which is an yeah, interesting I'm, I'm, journey. Yeah, I'm, I'm being a wind-up, obviously. So presumably they've been at home with you for a lot of the, the last year. Is there anything uh, that you've sort of been getting to in particular, you know, with them? Have you found that experience? So the main thing we got really into is my eldest son and I started mountain biking uh, in lockdown okay. one. So that's now become my newfound expensive hobby. And then with my youngest son, Jules, he's been getting into stop motion animation. And he's been coming up with these amazing little adventures, which have been quite fascinating to see that creative side of a six-year-old come out. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so... Are you looking forward to being back in the office? You, were you pre-pandemic? Were you a five days a week in the office type of person? And do you envisage that being the same in future? Or? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been working in London for over 20 years. So this has been the longest gap and away from town. I think going forward, I generally enjoyed working from home. And we were very fortunate to have built this space a few years ago. So it allows me a level of detachment from the house, whereas I can appreciate a lot of people have had to work out of their bedrooms or create makeshift offices. Going forwards, we have a new working out of office policy, which means you only have to really come into the office four days a month. I think I would use those days to come in, whether that was more or less, really for like more productivity sessions. So collaboration with our design management team, with my other colleagues around the business. So I think it will change the dynamic rather than just being there to do the work. I think to use it in a more productive space. I think I'll take that as and when. I've certainly enjoyed not having to commute into London and wake up so early every day. So let's talk about a little bit about Tide, if we may. I think it's fair to say it's sort of one of the more well-known names in the fintech world. Can you tell me a little bit about what the company does? Yeah, so Tide is a financial platform for small business owners. Uh, we really want to help entrepreneurs get back to doing what they love, which is their mission, their passion for the business they've started, whether that's a, a cake shop or a garage or a plumber, but reduce some of that back office admin load through introducing a simple, you know, good quality user experience and really allow people to follow their dreams. Okay, so I don't own a business, but if I did, I might use Tide for my banking as opposed to one of the more well-established household names because, you know, you can offer me a kind of a less admin heavy experience, kind of more friendly to use app and that sort of thing. Would that be fair to say? Yes, exactly. I mean, one of our sort of core cool USPs is that speed to sign up and that efficiency. So if I've been engaging in using biometrics and so on, you know, if you're not too complicated a business, we can literally have you signed up in a matter of minutes. Whereas if you think back to the you know, the establishment, you know, that could take weeks or even months. So I think that helps business owners. As soon as you have that transactional component, you know, you're, you're ready, your, your business is live. And that's something that certainly our customers value, along with, as you said, you know, a good quality user experience and providing tools that meet the needs of businesses as they scale. And what does your role as creative director chiefly involve? I'm ultimately accountable for design globally at Tide. So that sits over product, brand, and marketing design. That for me is quite an interesting thing because it's something I've noticed over the many years of working in in-house roles at places like Betfair, the BBC, and so on. But you know, those departments typically didn't have the greatest relationships of talking to each other. By having that under one roof, we can holistically go with what I describe as the product is the brand, the brand is the product. And what I mean is a singular service layer for joins the dots. So how you work in out of home for campaign marketing to TV, to the app experience, there is a DNA and a thread that glues that together. And I think, you know, the brand is all encompassing, but you need to manifest that through the app when you're in the product, then the interaction is the brand. When you're speaking to our customer service agents, you know, they are reinforcing and representing our brand along with our TV and press and so on. I think this is a really interesting area, actually. And I would maybe argue that you know, from a from an outsider's perspective, which is what I have, it is kind of you know 
perhaps the defining characteristic of the fintech sector, the fintech world is, you know, the design of these companies and the sort of branding is so central to their business, you know, even when, when they're selling what is ostensibly a fairly sort of dry, in some ways, financial products. And, you know, the archetypal example, I guess, would be the bright pink bank cards, the hot coral bank cards that Monzo, that Monzo give out to their account holders. You know, would you agree? Do you think that good design is, is really important to the fintech industry and sort of in its DNA and kind of quite central to its growth? I think good design is integral to any industry, to be honest. I think good design means that it's good customer experience. You're reducing the complexity of the system to provide simplicity for the end user. For us at Tide, that's our members. We want to, you know, lots of people start businesses. And I was in this space maybe 25 years ago. You know, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know anything about running business. And I think there's a opportunity here with brands like Tide to help people level up their education and knowledge and provide that through different platforms. You know, the advent of the iPhone over the last you know, decade or so changed everything in terms of people's expectations, what good interaction design is, how you use it. You know, there isn't a, a new child in the land that doesn't now run up to a TV and start tapping it because they think it's some sort of interactive screen experience. So I think design is just so prevalent in everything we do today. You know, what's the approach that you take, you know, in terms of your work as creative director at Tide? You know, have you got a, a philosophy, something that you're kind of particularly passionate about and, and like to focus on? Yeah, so I mean, it literally goes back to that thing, which I said, which is the product is the brand, the brand is the product. And I think it's creating that thing that joins the dots and perpetuates that thinking. So when we're working in product design and with user researchers, you know, not only are we concerned about how you go through a journey, but how do you make someone feel in that journey? And that's sort of the evolution that we're trying to put through. And, and I think that, yet again, perpetuates for all of the communications that we put out there. So we've been going through a body of work since Q4 of last year, looking at the evolution of our visual language uh, and then bringing those levels of modernity, but sticking true to our tied DNA. And that's something that we'll roll out later in the year, but not forgetting that the experience is fundamentally key to everything that we do. And you want to make it simple. You want to remove that burden of complexity from the uh, member, the user, and put that upon the system. So whether that's comms, brands, uh, product experience, it's about making a thing that works and removes that back office admin and ultimately gets our members back to doing what they love. What do you want it to feel like to the people that are using Tide? You know, in what way do you want it to feel different to, you know, a business owner who, who has done banking before through a more traditional route? Yeah, so if they've done it through a more traditional route, then I, I guess we want to add simplicity. Can we automate some of the experiences? Can we use uh, machine learning and other intelligence to remove some of that complexity? I think it's just taking the things that exist already and where can we provide efficiency? And you're growing your team, I believe. You've obviously become quite a lot more established in, in recent years. So over the last 15 months, we've grown by 450%. So we now have a design management team. So we now have lead researcher in uh, John Knight. We have Alex Freewin as our lead product designer. We have Patricia Bettini for just joined literally last week as our first design ops lead. Uh, Cole Whitten leading on UX writing. And we have Oscar One lead, leading on UI design and the evolution of our brand as well. So, and then with a complement of designers underpinning that from product design, user researchers. So really building out, you know, what you would expect of a modern product team. What we had last year was product designers and writers. Now we've introduced user research to design upside. So it's maturing the practice, but helping the business understand both the strategic and tactical things that design can offer um, to our members and internal stakeholders. And there's obviously a lot of opportunities there in sort of having a much bigger team, but are there any, does it pose any challenges for you as well? Yeah, we grow fit provide, there's, there's more people. You've got to make sure that you evolve your culture, you know, with more people comes more complexity. So how do you put the, you know, the career paths, the matrices, how do you look after the people in the team so that they feel inspired, you know, they are looked after and cared for, especially, you know, the last 12, you know, 12 plus months when we've all been at home. How do you keep those bonds? As I said, we've grown rapidly. So how do we build that social dynamic when we are geographically dispersed between India, Eastern Europe and the UK? So those are the things that we're working on as a team, but it's very much working together as a team, but, you know, engagement surveys, discussions and, and driving as much ownership as possible back to the team. Whilst I may lead the team, you know, the team is made up of all of us and more equally weighted within that. We've talked a little bit about how, you know, for an account holder, Tide might feel different and how that's different. But I wondered whether, you know, you think for people working for Tide, that feels different as well to somebody to working for a, you know, a main, a big four high street bank. Do you think, do you think it should? And do you think it does? I kind of know it does from speaking to other colleagues that, um, that work in, you know, the, the larger institutions. So I think it's the velocity and the pace and the appetite for driving change within the industry is huge. 
and uh, internally refer to ourselves as tidians and we've had people who have left and then come back because they didn't like the velocity of the organizations that they went to you know, and having come from a big american corporate that bought some uk brands a few years ago you know the pace at which we used to, we shipped wasn't particularly fast and we weren't really innovating i think at tide it's just like there's so much demand to get great new products and features out now underpinned by solid user research that's what i really like at tide there were just so many challenges like so many things that we can try and solve for our members it's trying to work out you know as a product and design and technology community how we do those things and then cascade the rollout so i think that's the thing that i enjoy the most this kind of there's never a dull moment do you think it's for everyone? Do you think it takes, a, you know, there's a particular kind of person who thrives, especially in that sort of environment? Because it sounds quite, it sounds quite intense. It sounds quite full on. Yeah, I think you've got to thrive around being able to handle ambiguity and to be able to look with a positive mindset between, uh, you know, every problem has an opportunity to solve. So how do we work together? How do we collaborate as, you know, technologists, product people, designers and so on, HR together, our people team? You know, to, to make it better internally as a company, but ultimately to make it richer for our end members. You're right, it's not for everybody. And um, I've been fortunate in my career to work at you know, large companies, smaller companies, startups more established. It's a good place to work. I think out of you know, 20 plus years of design, I, I really enjoy the culture that we have. And there's a, there's a really good level of respect, but from the top to the bottom, that you know, it's a very open culture. And I think we live by three values, which are to be data driven, to be one team globally and to be member first. Do you think that we are yet getting to the stage where challenger banks, these kind of new sort of startup banks are raising questions for the more traditional banks out there? Yeah, absolutely. I think around, you know, everything from cost to offer of service, the richness of the product experience to quality of customer service. And I think that's the thing, the big part that's probably changed over the last decade is that need for real focus on customer experience and quality, you know, to be where the customer, the member is, you know, whether that's on the app or the end of the phone or so on. Can we talk a little bit more about your background as well? If that's okay? If yeah, for sure. How did you come to work at Tide? Can you plot up your career for us? Yep. So I've never studied design, never studied art. I went to my first university for a week in Southampton. I went skateboarding for the rest of the year. That was fun. Then that, fun. Girlf- that was pretty cool. And I had a, a girlfriend that was studying illustration design up in Demont in Lincoln. So um, I took a course up there, did that for six months around sort of photography and film. But really, that wasn't really what I was. I have. I worked for five years as a commercials editor and I, I love film and moving image. That course wasn't for me. And I wanted to learn different skills and that was just when sort of non-linear editing premiere and uh, final cut pro tools were starting to come to fruition so i basically uh, quit uni uh, told the bank i had graduated uh, got given some money i bought a mac and i locked myself away for a year and i started learning about this thing called design i sort of touched upon design through when i was uh, running club nights in brighton like hip-hop nights and designing flyers and, and visuals but i didn't know that was a job i didn't know that was a thing that was a byproduct of my experience and then from there i was really fortunate to get a a gig at a local agency uh, in a town called Horsham, worked there for about a year and a half. And then really my big break was a friend of a friend was a recruiter. He'd heard of an agency called MC Saatchi uh, in Soho, who are uh, starting a digital division called EMC Saatchi. And that was my big break. And I'm forever grateful for the people who gave me that opportunity and to have moved to London you know, about 18 months before the sort of dot-com crash. So I had a huge amount of exposure. I mean, Saatchi was an amazing, amazing agency still today and the clients they had and the business and the brands and the people I met were amazing. I mean, some of those people um, had gone on to pretty impressive things like Matt Bain, who was on the team, ended up being a European CEO for AKQA, another mm-hmm. guy called Mark, for, um, I think he's the MD of like Opera. So the people that I had exposure to were incredible and I followed their career as much as they possibly followed mine. And then from there, really, it was a mix of agencies, in-house roles from places like Betfair to BBC moving between sort of brand and products and that's why I started to sort of formulate my view of pin sort of brand and marketing needed to nestle and come together and then really how did I get to Tide well I was working for an organization that I wasn't really that happy with and whilst you know organizations need to make money you know I'm concerned about the customer experience and all of the touch points and building a a reputation for design that meets the other disciplines in the organization and tied off of that with me. And when I met Lawrence, who's now our UK CEO, I really bought into how he saw Tide and the vision that was um, occurring there between the other VPs in the business for I interviewed for. And I signed up highly fulfilling the promise that I was offered as a opportunity. What's different about working at Tide to some of those other 
brands that you mentioned. You mentioned the BBC, Betfair, pretty big names. How does it feel different at Tide? Yeah, I mean, BBC is amazing. You know, it is an incredible global institution, but it can be a bit slow. You know, it just it's just the bureaucracy of working in such of an organisation. I mean, there's fantastic things that come out like iPlayer and so on, but there's a lot of complicated moving parts. Betfair, I was there for four years. I went from it growing to being one of the best teams I've ever worked with, led by Julie Kennedy. Then a complete change, you know, in a new CEO, different management and leadership, which ultimately led to me wanting to leave. Um, so I think it's everything, you know, con- change is constant. So I think you have to work and adapt to that organization. And at Tide, we have moved from being a startup to a scale up. We're a five year old business now. So now we need to put some rigor and maturity around some of the different practices. So certainly design, you know, we're maturing that practice. We're working with our stakeholders to understand the, the true benefit of design, putting measure and rigor behind how we operate. And ultimately just building a fantastic team. Now, you mentioned being quite into your skateboarding at one stage in your life. You attribute that your interest in design to skateboarding. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's what taught me about style and, you know, shape and form. And obviously skateboarding comes with a whole load of design attached to it really very graphics for the pier on the board and the wheels the you know t-shirts the emblems you know look at some of those iconic brands like power craft at santa cruz and so on you know, those vans for example has gone from being a little skate shoe brand to now you know a global thing you know in the way that we expect sort of brands like red bull and so on so i think that is what taught me about good design within you know the context of skateboarding but also i find skateboarding you can do it with your friends and that's great and you do it as a team or whatever but only it's on you to progress and to put that progression and put yourself outside of your comfort zone i, I think the same can be very similar of a career in design or probably any industry is there any advice that you would give to your younger self oh good question I think I would just try and learn learn more than I did already. I, I've enjoyed the career. I don't believe in sort of regrets. I think there are things that maybe I missed opportunities at the time. I've been really fortunate. I think, you know, be, be good people, help people as much as possible. I've, I've tried to distill that with myself and the teams that I've worked with. Those are things, the learnings that I've had, you know, from my line managers and bosses over the years. So, no, I, I think I would just, you know, seize every opportunity that you can take, um, whether that's, you know, freelance or side hustles, and to do that but hopefully i am where i am with my family a six out of ten family doing a job that i love with people that i really enjoy working with daily and finally is there anyone working in the fintech industry or outside of it that you particularly admire or look up to yeah so it's, it's less it's not somebody i've met and it's more i admire the fact that his organization have created that role so at lloyd's banking group there's a chief design officer is dan Mikowski. so i've seen a few of his talks he's very clearly very passionate and smart guy so i think it's great to see figureheads and executive level representing design so you know, i follow him i think he has some interesting things to say and it's great you know with to see design at that level within in companies and we're starting to see that of course more and more across different industries today and i think that really shows you know the importance and acceptance of design you know, and starting to create a level playing field with our technology partners and the other roles that you typically see at the C-suite. William, just before I let you go, I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions, if that's OK. OK, um, that's cool. We're going to be very frothy and, you know, I'll start off, I'll start off easy. So who's your favourite son? No, that's a joke. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. Prep coffee or what? mug of tea? Prep coffee. What's a skill that you wish you had but don't? Flying. Do you have a least favourite advert on TV at the moment? Yeah, I literally hate the Go Compare advert. The opera guy? Yeah, can't stand him. Do you have any unusual phobias? Spiders. Literally can't stand them. They're evil. Would you prefer a staycation or a week in the Mediterranean? Week in the Mediterranean, every time. What are you currently reading? I am currently reading a book about orgs in design, which I can't remember the name of the book, but it's been fascinating to read about how different people have structured different um, design enterprise scale solutions. And lastly, I think this is my favourite one to ask. If you were a character in a zombie film, how long do you think you would last? So if we're going by Shaun of the Dead, the sort of status within such yeah, a okay, thing, then, yeah. I, then I think I would make it to the pub. You, know, you make remember, it to the pub. Stake, stake through the heart or off with the head. Make it to the pub, but not necessarily to the end. Yeah, much like, who knows, today pubs are open, maybe I'll make it to the pub for at least one <laughs> pint. And a haircut if I'm lucky. William, it's been great having you on the podcast. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, uh, listener, for imbuing yourself with the sounds of Fintech Mix. Please do check out our other episodes, if you haven't already, where we've interviewed some great guests from across the Fintech world. Fintech Mix is a production from Say Hello to Audio. To find out more about the podcast, visit fintechmix.com.